If you're even remotely familiar with the term automation and have basic know-how, chances are you're already familiar with Zapier, considering their pioneer status in the workflow automation space. However, as the novelty fades out over time, the need for an automation tool more powerful gets stronger every day. And this is where Make is trying to make their move. The question is, is Make more useful than Zapier? And more importantly, which one should you go with? Let's find out in our video today. As expected, the first core difference you'll notice between Make and Zapier is in terms of how both platforms look and feel. Make, for instance, comes with a bunch of features that prioritize visual automation, such as the scenario editor, which we found to be easier to use, especially when compared to Zapier's linear table-like builder. This feature alone made Zapier feel a bit old school, especially when you notice the drag and drop scenario editor from Make allowed us to visually create, edit, and expand our automation in a manner that felt more intuitive, logical, and almost like a video game. Now, aside from, from being more user-friendly and intuitive in comparison, the scenario editor from Make also demonstrates processes being executed in real time. And as you can see, it looks pretty slick. Scenarios can grow in size and complexity. And just for that matter, being able to visualize the process at a glance provides us with a bunch of tactical advantages. For example, we all know by now how important it is to get a clear view of scenarios to understand processes and work for their improvement. For that, Make Scenario proved to be a strong visual aid for utilizing data flows and results. Speaking of visuals, being able to see and locate errors where they are happening is not only important, but almost vital to a granular level. Not only that, but we found Make to be a bit more flexible and make it easy to rearrange, duplicate, share, copy, and maintain the overall workflow. We found this to be particularly effective, considering we didn't have to rely on guesswork anymore. And why would we? Everything's clearly displayed up front. At this point, we are all familiar with how Zapier features over 5,000 apps. But the thing is, it's not the only platform to pull that off. While a bit smaller in scale, Make features over 1,600 plus apps in itself, and the number is growing by the minute. But here's the thing, the number of apps hardly tell the whole story regarding their possibilities. And this is where API endpoints come into play. To put things into perspective, Make, as of right now, features up to two times more API endpoints per app when compared to Zapier, which allows you to automate more actions within your apps. Now, if that wasn't enough, on top of that, we were also able to connect with any app that has an API by utilizing Make's HTTP module. What this means is, in layman's terms, even if an app is not officially available on Make, but there's an available API, you can connect that to other apps through the HTTP module. Now this is where we felt like Make really made a difference, as it provided a bunch of features that are unique and native to them, and the platform take multi-step workflows and instant webhook execution, for example. These mean we didn't have to wait for an update time for simple one-to-one -one integrations. Multiple workspaces, customer user roles, and teams were another benefit, considering we could pull off a one company, one make account rule and put limitations on who gets access to what. Additionally, we got unlimited access to tools, which include filters, functions, and routers on all plans and could rearrange our workflows according to our project, which includes the ability to change the order of the apps at will. While Zapier is still a pretty functional tool that covers simple integrations for us, Make comes offering a range of features that's honestly hard to compete against. While using Make, we saw a serious upgrade in light of the challenges we and our business have been facing on a regular basis. Now, putting aside the uniqueness and everything else, there are a bunch of solid upgrades that exist in Zapier, but are further improved in Make. Make comes with the ability to have an unlimited number of routes in a scenario, while Zopier allows us a maximum of five paths in each zap. 
We also found the ability make has to work with files useful, as it could manipulate and archive files according to our needs. Zapier did have it as well, but make makes it better. For pricing, in make we were charged per operation, while in Zapier we got charged per zap. To make it easier for the masses to understand, by charging users per operation, what Make does is provide a full-service platform at a more affordable price point when compared to Zapier. Zapier charged us a monthly fee based on the number of tasks we use, where each plan, hypothetically, will have around a thousand tasks per month limit. If we decided to go over this number, we had to upgrade our package. Now Make also charges monthly, but the interesting bit here is the charge is based on the number of operations instead. However, do keep in mind that an operation on Make counts as each step of a workflow. So for example, if you had five steps in a workflow, upon completion it'll count as five operations, whereas in Zapier, it'd count as one. Take a look below to understand the pricing a bit better. If it wasn't already obvious, if you were to ask us which one to pick based on our own experience, we'd go for Make Over Zapier, mainly due to their price, user interface, and accessibility. Do keep in mind, it doesn't mean that Make is better than Zapier, no. There are instances where Zapier would be the optimal choice, but the decision for us was made. If you're still confused, we'd highly recommend doing a test run on both of these platforms and let us know which one worked for you better in the comment section down below.